Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Drew. This is Just a Guy Linux and this is day three of our 60 videos in 60 days challenge. Uh, today we are talking about i3 window manager. It comes on the heels of talking about BSPWM. As I mentioned, BSPWM is my favorite starting window manager. Today, looking at i3, the window manager most people start with, and here's the thing, both i3 and BSPWM are excellent first tiling managers. They are the most common entry point. So what makes i3 different and which one might be right for you? i3 uses what is called explicit layouts. You can choose between horizontal or vertical layouts. Just so you know, when I say horizontal, that basically implies a column type layout. And consequently, vertical would be like row type layout, okay? Now, when you think about I3, and I mentioned the fact that it's explicit layout control, you can have tabbed or stacking layouts. Um, the reality of it is you have more control over an I3 window manager than you do the algorithmic new window uh, that you would have for BSPWM. Which is better? I don't know. I don't know that one has a leg up on the other. It truly is on how your brain works. Getting my i3 setup running is the same process. It's just a different URL. As you can see, you're going to go to i3 hyphen setup. Let's go over here. And when you are looking at this, um, this readme, it's going to talk about how to do the installation. It's going to talk about what it installs. Now, i3, SXHKD, Polybar, Rofi, Dunst, all of these are being installed from the Debian stable repos. Again, I'm using a specialized PyCom. I think it's really, really um, slick. So that is the one exception here. So you would just install, reboot, and you're going to be greeted by what you're currently looking at, which is my i3 setup. So let's start with the basics. All the key bindings are using the super key modifier. So I'm going to go to super four, uh, which puts me on workspace four. So when I hit super enter, it's going to launch WESTERM. If I hit super enter again, it's going to launch WESTERM yet again. And if I keep going, you're going to notice that it uh, keeps everything in equal sized columns. If I use super Q, it's going to close the window. If I use super spacebar, it's going to launch Rofi in the center of the screen and I can I can select whichever application that I want. Let's just do Genie real quick. Okay. And also I can use super and then a directional arrow. So left and I can change focus to whichever um, window is open. Now this is a little bit different in that I left Vim keys in. So if I use super H, it's going to go to the left super H or super L um, and you can then re uh, change focus by using Vim keys or Vim motions, I should say. Okay. Now much like before, it, I can also use uh, super shift and use the same arrow key or Vim key to move something. So if I hit uh, super shift and then left, it's going to reposition the in focus window to the left. Okay. And also to the right. And if I want to, like I just said before, if I want to use the Vim key, uh, H super shift H super shift L. Now, before we go any further, let's actually, let's go here and let's say Figlet, uh, just so we have a, a difference. Okay, let's Figlet A, and then let's go over here, and we're going to do Figlet B, okay, and, and let's go Figlet C, okay. Just that way we know which is which, all right? Now, also, let's go back over to Workspace 1. Because what makes i3 different is this stuff right here. 
having tabbed layouts, stacking layouts, and then toggling which split layout you want. So let's go back to Workspace 4. Okay, so when I use Super W, it is going to, the windows become tabs with a tab bar visible. So you're looking at C, and if I'm using, I'm gonna use the direction arrows here. So super and then left arrow and left arrow and left arrow. And I'm able to switch, everything is in full screen, but everything is tabbed. Now, now if I wanted to change away from the tab layout and go with the stacked layout, I would just use super S. And that changes things so that your tabs actually are vertical. Now I'm gonna use super and then up arrow, up arrow or down arrow. Again, if I wanted to use vim motions, I would use super and then K or J. Okay, but I'm gonna use directional arrows, so there you go. So I can change between super W, which is tabbed, and super S, which is stacked. But if I don't want to, and I just wanna go back to tile, I just use super T, and it then will put everything back in columns. Now what if I want to hit super T twice? It actually will give me everything in rows. That's the way I like to describe it. It's in rows, so I can use my directional, uh, super directional and change focus here as well. And it, let's just say I want to super shift, you're able to move things around just like any, you know, just like anything. So super T goes back, uh, super W. And like I said before, super shift will allow me to move A to the end of the tab group. So this is the core i3 philosophy, explicit layout control. You choose how windows are organized and not the algorithm. Polybar is only showing four, but there are 10 workspaces. Let's go ahead and move one of these. Let's move this over to Super Shift 5. So Super 5. And you'll see that um, we move Thunar over to its own workspace. A native i3 feature is scratch pads. Personally, I don't use scratch pads, but there are a lot of power users that do. I have one set up. It is a super shift return, and it's going to show the ST terminal as a scratch pad. So if I just, let's just say, start something, uh, some type of application within the terminal, I can simply use super shift return to hide that. And then when I want to see it again, I just use super shift return once again, and it is already, it's still there. Now I'm going to go ahead and close the uh, the scratch pad as well as this instance of Genie. Let's go ahead and say, don't save this. Now I'm going to go over to Workspace 2. I've got a different uh, instance of Genie already there. And if I want to just say, add this to a scratch pad, there is a key bind, super minus, okay? And what it has done, it is basically changed this from a tiled window to a scratch pad window. So what if I want to hide it? I, you can use super equal and it has been hidden. It is a now hidden scratch pad. So even if I go over to say workspace six, okay, which is completely blank and I use super equal again, it will then pop up that scratch pad becomes visible on workspace two, uh, six. Well, I don't really want Genie to be a scratch pad, so I'm gonna use super shift and then equal, and it changes it from a scratch pad back to a tiled window. Let's move this back over to workspace two. Uh, by the way, one more uh, scratch pad that's already kind of like pre-defined, and that is the um, pulse mixer. It is uh, super V. And if I want to just, you know, there it is. It's, it's, it's simple, not really that important. Now let's go back over to Workspace 2. Oh wait, I forgot something. Okay, so I wanted to talk about resizing and I didn't do that yet because Vanilla i3, that this is not Vanilla i3, just so we're clear, uh, has resize mode. You press a key, you enter the resize mode, you adjust it with the arrows or a window, and then you escape. 
Uh, this is clearly not vanilla I3, but if you go to, um, if you go here, let's say, and you use the uh, super control and then left, okay, you can resize one if you want. You know, basically what you can do is you can resize them using, you enter resize mode by using control, uh, super control, and then a arrow key, okay? So that is what that is doing, okay? Now, i3's config structure is pretty simple. Let's go back over here and let's open up uh, Thunar. Now, like with BSPWM, I basically created a dot config and then the name of the window manager. So with BSPWM or i3. Now within the dot config i3, you've got everything that is uh, part of this configuration. There are three configuration files and then you've got Dunst, PyCom, Rofi, and so on. Let's go ahead and close this. Okay. Um, so the config is including the rules configuration as well as the workspaces configuration. Uh, it is setting mod four, which is the super key as the modifier. Uh, it's also setting the colors um, and it is telling you where the auto start.sh file is. So the auto start is gonna be in home.config uh, i3 and scripts. And this is what the auto start.sh file does. It starts polybar, uh, it starts your LX poll kit, Dunst, PyCom, it puts in the wallpaper and it starts your, um, your SSHKD or your key bind daemon. Now the workspaces.conf is simply just showing uh, the fact that there are 10 workspaces as well as the, uh, the numeric value for them. So if I use super zero, for example, it's gonna show 10. That's, that's all that is, okay? Now the rules.conf is not very long, I think, so it's 31 lines. And what it's doing is it's defining what the pixel size for the border is, what the gap sizes are, as well as which applications are floating, and also the scratch pads. But there's also an, an assignment. For example, if you open up GIMP, it is going to open it on Workspace 9. So if I use Super G, for example, which is the uh, is part of SXHKD, there you go, GIMP is now on Workspace 9. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Now let's go back over to Workspace 2, and you're gonna look at uh, the SXHKD. So what your key bindings are, okay? You're gonna see Scratchpad, Thunar, Genie, and so on, uh, including a, um, a power. So if I use Super X, I can log out, shut down, or reboot right there. Now, now obviously, uh, it's not going to be the same as BSPWM because it's using i3 engine as opposed to BSPC, which is the uh, BSPWM engine. So the commands have to be different, clearly. Now, also, I have roughly the same script um, for uh, the helper script. Now, so if I use super and then the slash, you'll be able to see what your key bindings are because it is parsing the SXHKDRC. That's all it's really doing. So you can see right here, like for example, the, the key that I just hit was that shutdown key, which should be positioned right after super uh, slash. So let's get, make sure that that is the case. So super slash and then super X. So anything that you put in this order. So if you want to, obviously, you may want to reorder things uh, but make sure that you keep kind of like the the position convention as well as the uh, the comment space and then uh, whatever the title is. Okay. So I mean, for example, let's let's do the same thing again real quick. You know, in case you did not see the video from the previous day, if I just uh, right here I say launch um, Helium browser. Okay, and then I was able to just say super, I think, 
I don't, I hope C is not, yeah, super C and then uh, helium. And then let's go ahead and save this. And then if I uh, use super escape, uh, that will reload the SXHKD, as well as if I use super C, it will open up um, helium right there, the browser. And also if I use super slash, you'll see that super C launch helium browser is now part of the uh, helper. Now, why is i3 a gateway window manager? And why do more people start with it? Well, it's explicit. You choose the layouts, you see tabbed, you see stacked and split modes. It's visual and it makes sense almost immediately, okay? As opposed to BSPWM where I think it's incredibly simple in terms of configuration. Um, it is kind of a set it and forget it. You react to the way the algorithm works. Now I can't deny the fact that i3 has some incredible native features like tabbed and stacked and scratch pads. I mean, I, there's no denying those things. Um, and the fact that I believe the i3 configuration is approachable. It includes, has inclusion files, it has plain text. It is a simple structure. Um, it is a manager that teaches you tiling without overwhelming you. It is explicit, it is well-documented. And I say, as I said before, it is still being developed today. Now, as we wrap up, I'm gonna kind of go through the slides. You know, I mentioned that uh, I think that there is no wrong answer. If you're a beginner, if you're beyond a beginner, or even if you're a power user, you have no wrong answer in using either one of these incredible uh, window managers. If you um, are looking at the tail of the tape, you know, as terms of um, configuration, I'm using only 53 lines against uh, 64, which is nothing. Um, it is a text and an inclusion file as opposed to just a bash script. Both the SXHKDRCs are exactly the same. The layouts is going to be automatic when it comes to BSPWM. It's just an automatic tree. And then you have explicit modes. And then as far as scratch pads, it is, there is a script that is included in the BSPWM uh, build th that I built uh, so that you can simulate scratch pads, but it is already built in to i3. So thank you for watching. Tomorrow is gonna to be about OpenBox. It is a stacking, not a tiling window manager. Now, if you wanna see a massive configuration file, uh, yeah, let's stay tuned for OpenBox. It's about a thousand lines long. I mean, it's already built um, for you, but overall an XML is an incredibly like wordy uh, configuration file. But OpenBox is more like any other kind of like normal, um, XFCE like or cinnamon like or experience much more mouse driven than keyboard driven. So stay tuned for tomorrow and open box. And until then, see you.